Hello, and thank you for joining us on the Monday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. Today on the program, sad week in Nigeria as more than 339 persons killed, 44 kidnapped in different attacks. And later on the show, Southeast governors reiterate support for state police as policemen with security officials killed in reverse attack. I'll be hanging out with Babaji De Koladi Otitoju and Dotun Oladipo. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. We start on a rather sad note. Like a hydra-headed monster, the Boko Haram insurgency is becoming more intractable for Nigeria. Now, we are witnessing a resurgence in the activities of insurgents. After invading Gaydam in Yobe State a few days ago, Boko Haram terrorists attacked Minok in Borno State on Saturday and inflicted heavy casualties on the Nigerian military. The Iswap elements rolled into the town on dozens of gun trucks and attempted to dislodge military base, but met with stiff resistance from the ground troops before the arrival of the Nigerian Air Force fighter jets. Jide, can you feed us in into what happened in the Borno city in Minoc? Well, um, usually when these things happen, you get conflicting reports. Uh, we were first told that the attack was repelled, but I've seen pictures gory pictures of our soldiers today and I'm really, really troubled at the number of troops dead, those pictures I saw, and the kind of, the way some of the bodies were mutilated is extremely difficult to look at those pictures two times. It underlines the extent of sacrifice that these troops are making. And it underlines the need for us to up our game, be more um, process driven, come up with the right tactics that will put an end to the nonsense that Boko Haram constitutes. Uh, looking at those pictures it completely ruined my day because mm. I had thought that, well, some of what I had earlier were exaggerated, but from what I saw, it's really, it's really disturbing. And I'm not impressed that that corridor, the, the area between Minoc, let me say, from Benishek, although attacks do not really happen in Benishek these days, from that point to Auno, it's extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous on that Maiduguri Damaturu Highway. Many people have been kidnapped, many people have been killed on that route. So any time you are driving through that road, or you are just commuting, Whenever you come back alive, okay. you should give glory to God because it's an extremely dangerous place uh, to go to. We've lost so many people on that road, and it, 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 it should tell us that Boko Haram has a base that is not far away from that place because to mobilize quickly and get to that point, you must have a base uh, maybe in the Konduga area, not far from that, that place that we need to go and take out. As long as we allow them to continue to run their bases close to these dark spots, we won't have peace in those areas. And I think it's about time that we, 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 we told these Boko Haram guys who, who is in charge. That doesn't, when you see the, the way they operate and the number of troops, the number of um, 
our military guys that we've lost. And since January now, the attack has been very, very frequent. And when you look at what statistics are saying from January to March, this is April now. By the time you calculate it, we're talking about over 200 attacks. And we can't just continue like this. They keep overrunning military bases. They keep doing so many things that would deal us as a country. Yeah, well, we've um, said this several times on this program. This is uh, not a conventional war. While the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Air Force, the Navy, police, um, civil defense wait to recruit in a proper and structured manner. These six agents don't, don't need that. They just need boys on the streets, but boys that they have cajoled or even overwhelmed into joining them. So it becomes a problem. We are losing officers and men, but we are unable to replace them as quickly mm. as we should because there is a process. Total process. That must go into this. They are, they are recruiting anyhow. It's not to get boys who are willing to die. Mm. So it's, it's a major issue. I say it any time. I see military men, even around here in Lagos, where we feel that they are not doing much. It's a feeling. Because you don't know where that person is coming from. Maybe he just returned from Bono State or Yubi. I give them room anywhere. Whether it is at the airport, at um, E3, anywhere, they should. We should honor the sacrifice that they have been making for us. Because it's, it's um, you know, whichever way the minor issue went, whether it was friendly fire, whether it was the, we lost officers and men. And we should continue to pray for them and hope that someday we'll be able to overcome these attacks. They are becoming too frequent, and um, we are losing too many, too many officers and men. Julian, in terms of um, manpower, I, I don't think we, I think we have problem with it. As in, we don't have enough to man all the strategic areas. Or after we might have. Um, um, dislodge the, ter um, the terrorists from a place to keep troop there to hold on to that place. I don't think we can afford the luxury. So that's why you see these terrorists always come going back to those areas. But in this case, this is a super camp. Super. Yeah. So you have um, your regular normal number uh, number no, normal troop strength at the super camp because the the super camp. Is designed in a way to accommodate so many troops. Some small bases were collapsed into the super camps, and their weapons too were like contributed to form the super camp. That's the idea of the super camp. So you will expect that a super camp will be impregnable. But we've seen um, the recent past that. Super camps can be overrun by Boko Haram. There are several cases. That's that super says camp. a lot about their numerical strengths and, and the and, and and the preparation. The preparation, the kind of weapons that they bring to engage you. Yeah. These people have uh, intelligence gathering capability. Whether it is the crude form or uh, uh, not um, uh, technologically based, but they have capacity to gather intelligence. And even soldiers have told me before that they've seen Boko Haram drones overlooking their bases. Usually, soldiers. In, uh, in Bono North, some of them have spoken to me that they saw drones monitoring their, their camp. So that way, with those drones, in fact, one soldier told me that um, around 6 p.m., they suddenly saw drones. Boko Haram sent drones. So with those drones, they can know 
like how many soldiers they need. They can know the weapons you have at that base, whether it is a super camp or it's not it's, uh, so super. They know, they then will prepare. And these preparations, you know that a lot went into these preparations, given the manner of execution and the success, the rate of success. When people say, oh, they are not occupying any Nigerian territory, you still see it even in army press releases. They will be mentioning Boko Haram bases that they have dislodged. They will be saying that they went back to their bases. So are those bases not part of Nigeria? So why are we promoting something that we, we know in our hearts is not reality? Where do they plan? Anybody who wants to attack a super camp, it is not a few minutes preparation. Where do they sit down to plan these things? It is on Nigerian soil. It is not in Chad. And we have to identify those bases of theirs and take out those bases. In any case, we know where some of those bases are. Mm. As long as we give them that room, if we are not offensive in nature, we are defensive, we wait for them to bring attack to us, and then we repel, or fail to repel, but report that we repel, then there will be a problem. We have to go after these, these fellows. This is the thing. Look at the embarrassment in Gaydam. Mm. Look at the embarrassment in Gaydam. More than 72 hours. They are now trying to get the people to support them by distributing pamphlets to people in Gaydam that they should join them. To join yeah. Bukhara. Yes. yes. That's what they are doing. Because they've been there. They've been there, refused to leave the place. And even the chairman of the local government came out to say, no, stories that they were repelled are not true. Mm -hmm. These guys are still they're there. there. This is what we are grappling with. Uh, we have to make up our minds that these guys, we want to destroy them. This, was, this is uh, my knock. We want to destroy them. That's, uh, I, I think one of the uh, things, tank. one of the things you, we should also take into consideration has always been this issue of um, eating targets that are civilian in nature. Because these people embed civilians amongst them. So there is always this fear if we send the fighter jets after them, we are also going to have our own casualties. So what do we do? No. It's, for me, I think, like uh, Biki said, we should be able to have enough intelligence not to even allow them in. Because it is when they are in that they are able to mix. Where do they plan all of these things? Where, how do they execute them? Mm. Because some of these things that we talk about, in um, Minoc, they said they brought Dozens of gun trucks. Mm -hmm. Those things are not minor. That means they were preparing for a major. They were prepared. Operation. They were prepared. And those things are not they um, have, do, tricycles. They have driven through some kilometers. Exactly. Yes. For getting Before there. Getting yes. there. Yes. How are we? So there's no way they can. They won't pass through highways. Highways. That is why we that need. Really well. You must pass through highways. Exactly. That's why we a need convoy. to stop. To stop. convoy. Because once they come in, once they infiltrate. It's just like um, so nobody ki kidna call. yes, kidnappers holding people hostage. You won't be able to go mm -hmm. in there except you want to kill everybody. Hmm. Right. Except you want to do so. The wanting abductions and killings have become the order of the day in Nigeria. It was a sad week for the country as more than 239 people got killed while 44 others were kidnapped in separate attacks by armed bandits. States like Brno, Zamfara, Kaduna and Imo states are the hardest hit in this orgy of violence nationwide. Hmm. Are we in the states of, you know, Bedlam? Um, I'm worried about the Southeast now. I'm worried about the Southeast because we know of what is happening in the northeast. We know of what is happening around, you know, some northern states. But all of a sudden, the hitherto peaceful states, south south states that we used to know for peace and everything, we've been seeing a pattern of violence. Is that they are going to a police station to burn that police station? Or they are going to free prisoners. Now there's a sustained attack on every other week now. In the southeast, particular emotions. 
we have in Ebony, we have in Anambra, but Imo State is like the worst hit now. You should, say, you should say every day. Ebony, Ebony <laughs> has received more attacks than Imo. Than Imo. Mm. Mm. From the statistics, Ebony has received more attacks than Imo State. Uh, Imo State, the scale of the attacks uh, naturally frightening. If you see the execution of the attack on the um, the police headquarters and the release of those prisoners, yeah. anybody will be worried. But Ebony has had more attacks than any other state in the southeast. The truth is, for so long, we allowed what I could describe as rebel groups to gain momentum in the Southeast. Now that we are trying to go after them, they have acquired some capability. Mm -hmm. You will see that even um, despite the attack on the, the headquarters, of that, that that paramilitary group of the of the IPOP and the killing of that commander, we still lost soldiers in that attack. Yeah. We lost soldiers. We lost policemen. policemen. That tells you that they have some capability. Now we are now seeing what you can describe as drive-by killings. Drive-by killings were common in the early years of Boko Haram. You just see them, they'll just get to a checkpoint, open fire and drive off. Mm -hmm. That was what we witnessed in River State yes. yesterday. Yeah. All this points to real danger because Boko Haram started in this manner. Started in this manner. All of the things that we, saw, we are seeing, the uh, rebel group from the southeast doing Boko Haram did in their early days, mm. like going to free prisoners, mm. like uh, like uh, attacking police stations. Mm. You know, remember the first recorded uh, case of suicide bombing in our country. Mm. That guy, the Boko Haram guy that wanted to kill the police chief. It was uh, the police headquarters in Abuja mm -hmm. that he attacked. Ring him. You know, yes. So. This, this is how Boko Haram started. And Boko Haram started, we started uh, hand, uh, treating them with kid gloves. Some of our people even opposed the idea of designating them as it's terrorist groups. Mm -hmm. We shamelessly, some of us shamelessly, went all the way to the US to campaign in the Congress that they should not be designated as a terrorist group. Mm -hmm. Now, that group that we wanted to tolerate has become the bone in the throat of all of us. Hmm. So when politicians play politics with issues that they ought not to play politics with, the blowback is always bad for everybody. We are dealing with the blowback now. Hmm. I only hope that we will be able to muster the capability to deal effectively with the threats that we are seeing from the Southeast. For me, I have fear about everywhere. <laughs> you say you have fear for the South. I have fear for every Everywhere. part of our country. Now, you saw what happened in, uh, in Makodi, where students were kidnapped rice inside their school. They just kidnapped them right inside their school. It's not a case of, oh, maybe they went for a party and they were uh, ambushed. Inside their school, inside the school premises, taken away at gunpoint. These were not things that were happening before. So every part, and you want to say even in the North Central that uh, uh, in terms of kidnapping, we didn't have in, uh, so much of kidnapping in, in, uh, in um, Benue State. Yes, cases of criminal headsmen uh, uh, violating people's farms and all that. Yes, those ones were rampant. But kidnapping was not really rampant. But that's what we are getting now. And don't forget, even in that same place, we still have the boys of uh, uh, Tewase, mm -hmm. Ghana. Ghana. They are still running riot. So we have 
problem on our hands across our country. And when journalists talk about this thing, it is not lack of patriotism. It is foolish to say we are not patriotic because we talk about the problems in the land. We want solutions because it is when there is peace that we will all get to enjoy our country. If you can't travel freely, mm. it's not something to be happy about. There are times when you need to go and rejoice with your colleagues or your, your, your friends and you are scared to go. That means we are captive of fear in our country. Mm. And it's the Bible that says we shall not be captive of fear. <laughs> but the way it is now, so many of us are captive of fear. Mm. Because the alternative is but to put your life in danger. You cannot live our bridge anyhow again. Yeah. This is the thing. Mm. I, I, could, I couldn't even travel for the burial last weekend because it was in um, Abia State okay. where you have so, so much of coffee all around. And I said to myself, is it worth it? You know, it's, it's something we, we really have to work because on. If you go by road, you are in danger. The near or the express road, the <laughs> Jebu exists. All of that. And even if when you, when you, when when you, you fly, fly some from some way 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 to, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just all over. But there yeah, is a point that BQ made, and that's the fact that our politicians, they tolerate a lot of things for their own benefits. But why do they do so? Because they created these problems in the first place. If you recall when uh, Ahmad Gumi Sheikh was doing his um, tour, so to say, one of the things he came back with was that some of these terrorists confirmed, just like we've always known, that politicians made promises to them, mm. which they are not fulfilling. And those are the kind of threats you are beginning to see. For me, in the Southeast and South-South now, I think what we are doing is preparing for 2023, gradually. And it is showing. Because like we said here, at some point on this program, Imo State that is in trouble now could largely be traced to issues surrounding election or politics generally. My fear is the same thing will likely happen in Anambra as we, as we move on. That's my fear. Rivers that we saw, the governor himself is already expressing fear and all of that about 2023. So, for me, I think we should sit down as a country again and look at us political structure. What are the things that are producing? What are the issues resulting in all of this that we see after elections? Because these are not things, the things we do before election, they are not sustainable after election. If you recollect, Boko Haram was the same way. Some people in government who are going to go into government said, please, do this for us. After all of it, they said those promises they made them were not fulfilled. It, it resulted in this. When are we going to have an end to this? How do we ensure that we don't keep breeding these gangs that are, that are terrorizing us? Because like Biki said, it's all over. There, we can't, even Lagos is not safe. No, we are safe. No, we are safe. Lagos. As much as we want to feel comfortable, mm. no way I say. They can come in the, anytime. The Aja exists, the Lekki exists, ah. the activities of cultists Cults. there. As they, in, you know, know, it's, it's, they have their own time. problems. Mm. Mm. They have their own problems. Mm. But beyond this is even the national one. Mm. Uh, these people are they are coming in gradually, infiltrating the south or the whole of the south. And <laughs> if, if within that, in between, you now even yes. have the gangs operating within. They okay. found our country convenient for them to operate in. To operate. That's why they will come from Mali, they will come from different places and operate in our country. Which no yes, yes. Because we are not stopping them. We are not. Okay. We'll take this break. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's journalist and girls. We'll be right back after this time out.
Thank you for staying with us. Still, John, the standout. Now, Babajide, in all this, we're told that the number of deaths were recorded, more than three or 239 people were said to have been killed, while 44 others were kidnapped in separate attacks. And oh, yeah. I know most of these figures, they are just mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit... They'll, they'll be higher than that. Mm -hmm. For, uh, Under estimation. Some cases don't get reported. Mm -hmm. Like um, case of kidnapping now, um, certainly more than 44 persons have been kidnapped in the last, even in the last few days, maybe three, four days. But we are talking about one week, certainly much more than that. Uh, this morning at uh, around 1 a.m. in uh, Zaria Locust, a housewife uh, by the name uh, Maria was kidnapped. They came at 1 a.m., took her away with her two kids. So a situation in which people can't even sleep now without mm -hmm. the fear of their doors being broken mm -hmm. by kidnappers who would then take them away like um, a piece of merchandise. It's, it's, it's terrible. You, you, you didn't add a yacht to that. Then, no, I'm, I'm going to that because, <laughs> uh, you know, in Barapa, 18 passengers. Initially, the police denied that mm -hmm. this uh, uh, kidnapping happened. But in the end, the police had to join other people in, in trying to uh, secure the, uh, the, release. the release of these people. The then, of course, 18, yes, 18 passengers in a bus. Then, in um, Ekiti, an APC chieftain, Ebenezer uh, Busui, was kidnapped. A civil defense um, uh, uh, staff killed in Benin City. 20 women kidnapped by armed bandits uh, during the naming ceremony in the casino village on Friday. Then 11 persons killed, including four security operatives uh, by suspected e e ESN men. Then 17 killed by suspected headsmen in Benue. And then 11 persons killed again by suspected uh, headsmen in Nasarawa State. So these killings go on in our country and it reinforces the the feeling that we have that the country the security has literally collapsed in our country we've relied on the army extremely to secure our country but even that in my view now has backfired because you have to put the security of civilians in our communities in the hands of the police. Whatever we need to do to um, equip the police sufficiently, mm. give them the APCs that they need, give them the kits, give them the weapons mm. that they need to deal a decisive blow on bandits especially. We have to do it and leave the army to deal with Boko Haram. Cool. Maybe if we can do, do that, we won't be able to free some of the people some of the soldiers that we are using in the states. Yeah. Boko Haram is enough trouble for the army. <laughs> Let them go and deal with Boko Haram cool. while the police deal with, uh, with these bandits. I have Daniel on the line from Lagos State. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Good evening. Good evening, Daniel. Yes, sir. I really appreciate I, everything that I journalist Congress is doing to show that the make sure that Nigerians are in light. For example, now the discussion that we discuss about what is happening in Zima are from KD State. Over the January, I intend to travel because my family base is but because of fear of kidnapping and not able to travel. Mm. And I'm appealing to please, Baba Jide, if you can help us. Even in KP State, more especially in uh, there is one local government. If you pass, if you know Zuru very well, Zuru okay. local government. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There mm. is some villages 
around Zuru local government. Okay. Things are happening. Close to Zamfara. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, close to Zamfara. Things are happening there like two, two to three weeks ago last month. They killed many soldiers here. Yeah. Hmm. But I watched journalists hang out. I followed some media thinking of the report. Those kind of things that happened, but I did not see anything about it. It happened. Even one of my relatives, he lost his life. He said, Ani, he lost, he lost his life because of this bandage. One of my brothers, now that they are living there, they are farmers, they have to move now. They are inside Zulu. Hmm. Dana, there is a village called Dana. Things are happening. I don't really know. I'm scared so of even going. So effectively, effectively, the people who are chased away, um, I mean, the bandits who are under attack in Zafara, they are probably the ones who went to the Zulu area to operate. People there. Dana, yes. Dana, I have many relatives here. Sometimes, not, not any genuine thing. Don't worry, don't worry. It's Trump. Big Trump. Load with death. Come to Zoo and they drop, they drop it in Zoo. Somebody has to come and take him if you can, if you can recognize your, your, mm -hmm. your, your person there. Huh. You can do so much. Things are happening. Mm -hmm. Not only, not only Kaduna, not only changing the party in particular. Please, you should help us. Thank your, you. Uh, Thank you. Thanks, thanks for the heads up. The, uh, um, this, the information. Uh, uh, we, 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 we can't do anything. We can always uh, tell governments uh, it's a security issue. The one I was, <laughs> I was even mentioning so what, to what is saying is that we talk about Kaduna not mm -hmm. knowing that even in the, Kebi, 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 the yeah, problem yeah. is there. Yeah, so yeah. he wants also government, I like, uh, I like so that government can give uh, attention <laughs> to the security of that area. Mm. You know, that's the point I, that he's making. I was pointing out that there is, uh, 10 people were kidnapped in your states on Saturday from one Agbo hotel in Najawa. Mm -mm including the owner hmm. so that's why I said, these things are coming hotel. home mm. they are coming no, home they are, they, are, they are here they are we, here. We, we we look at what he said about the area in Oyo State Ajawa okay you know which is not too far from Oyo town itself so if we are not careful we, nobody will be able to go anywhere again the way we are, are trying to are keep going. us indoors indoors by force everybody. you know so do how do we and all this. It's a big problem. And we are not seeing enough resistance from no, we are, we are, the we, government we, of the We are not even seeing a strategy. <laughs> as in, as in Nothing is happening. Push back. We are not seeing a strategy to So we killed 100 bandits today. today. We killed 90 you tomorrow. Know? We killed this. Which was what Chad was not achieving. about that. Which was what Chad was achieving. Putting it out clearly. We've dealt look there. at the video. There, look there, at you know? the video that, that I got from the ambassador. You see the pictures of the, they said they arrested 300. Yes. You see them, they, they pour them we, on the sand. Some, uh, people that, uh, you, uh, you see uh, them. Dead they said, okay, we killed these people. You mm -hmm. see the people that they killed. Mm -hmm. Because they, they effectively uh, uh, put those rebels who tried to come in through the northern chart, they put them uh, the, uh, at bay. They put them at bay. Although some people now came up with stories that they were close to Jamena. Of course, that's a lie. They already, and they declared victory that, look, yes, it was, we had won this. But they, they wanted to come into Jamena, but it was from the... They went to meet them yeah, in yeah, the... Maybe that would be battle to, to them. In right. the north, uh, not, not an, uh, because that's where the extensive border with uh, Libya is. Yeah. They went there to confront them. Hmm. Not that they will wait until they bring the battle to Jamena. So, but the president paid with his life. Ultimately. We are saying that, look, these guys have their camps in different parts of Zavara, different parts of Kassina, and people know where their camps are. You know, that when you make up your mind that, okay, this guy is responsible for the killing of people, therefore we want to make an example of him. He's yes. the leader of the group, you kill him. Yes. How many of the leaders of the bandits yes. have we killed? Yes. Because we know some of those leaders. As we've read about we the idea that we saw his dead bodies, we saw and everything, uh, it will even, serve even, as an even, example. Even, yeah. Warren Daji that died, it was even a, a rival, uh, a bandit from a rival group, Dogo Gide, that killed him. Mm -hmm. 
because Buarinda just stole uh, uh, cattle uh, from uh, Dogo Gide's in laws. It wasn't the military operation that killed him. So we're saying these forests are there. We know where these forests are. Let's have military they operations operate to every kill them. Day. These bandits, they operate, they kidnap ah. people every day. At least government should make just scapegoats. You know, we've, we've said it here uh, a couple of times. There should be coordinated information dissemination when you do operations. A situation where you are working and nobody is seeing it. He said, even the disservice to you. Let's see. What are you doing? What are the steps? That way you can even embolden Nigerians to come out and say, okay, well, we then are not aware of any major operation. If, there's, yeah. if the consensus within them is not that they it. want to dialogue with them, let them start the process of dialogue and we'll see. Yes, I don't know. No, they have not said that they want so to. So what? Why are we stalling? Well, I don't they know why, why we are not killing them. We should be wasting We're them. We're stalling. <laughs> It should be wasting them. Mm. That's the that's the, that's the thing. Still on security, as rising insecurity continues to uh, assault our collective intelligence, and many parts of, of Nigeria have taken the need for the state police home. More than before, faced with the mounting tension and incessant attacks, governors of the southeast states have restated their commitment to a common joint security corps, codenamed Ibubiagu as their regional outfits to combat rising insecurity in the zone. In the face of this, some security men were killed in the Ikwere local government area of River State, Nigeria South-South, in yet another deadly attack on security officers by unknown gunmen. But let's share the story of the Southeast Governor's meeting with you. The rising spate of insecurity in the southeast is worrisome, with the latest being an attack on the residence of the Imo state governor. The zone that was once described as the most peaceful region in the country is currently being plagued by a frequent record of attacks on security facilities and its operatives. The South Governor's Forum's meeting also had prominent traditional rulers, religious leaders and academias present. The governor's resolves that the Ibubuago Corps will work with the police and other security agencies to protect lives and property of the citizens. Southeast governors and leaders reinstated the adoption of a common joint security outfit called Ibubuago, with our regional headquarters here in Enugu State. Ibubuago will work with police and other security agencies in our operations to protect lives and properties in Southeast. The forum directs Commissioner of Justices from the five Southeast states to work with Joint Security Committee for the amendment of existing state laws to give legal power to the outfit. We mandated our Honorable Attorney Generals and Commissioner for Justice of the Southeast states to work with the Joint Security Committee to come up with the amendment of the existing state laws to reflect the new Ebubago outfits because people have been asking about laws. We have laws. Now the amendment is to reflect our corporations. While condemning the attack on the country home of Governor Opus of Demand, he directs our Nizindig leadership to set up a peace and reconciliation committee to engage people for the peace and security of the zone. The meeting directed our Nizindig president to immediately form two committees. One is Southeast Peace and Reconciliation Committee to engage our people for the peace and security of our people and our visitors. We also have Strategy and Welfare Committee to engage and protect our people, especially those who have been unfairly treated, both in Southeast and all over the country. In solidarity with our governors, we support the um, Bubago uh, security outfit. And um, we also want to uh, partner with Hanese Libo in ensuring there is peace in South East Zone. Southy governors also reinstated their support for a restructured Nigeria, setting up a state police and ban on open grazing. Bamedelia Jai, TVC News, Enugum. Southeast governors there talking about Ebu Beagu. Jiri, I already there's there's this fear that how will this Ebu Beagu work? 
because somehow, somehow, the parallel um, outlawed uh, IPOB in that area, they've been able to form their own Eastern Security Network. They have their structure, they have everything. Mm. And those ones, they, they vowed to frustrate this Ibubiago from working. And this ESN, when I listened to Ima Power, their spokesperson yesterday was like saying that their aim and objective is to just deal with those um, um, headers that are you know, encroaching into their land and everything. But from this now, how successful would it be, be with the governors setting it up? Is it not late in the day? I, I, I'm also convinced that they should have done it before now. At the time when the Southwest um, governors decided to come up with Amoteko, I remember that some governors, even in northern Nigeria, began talking about the need for a regional uh, security body mm -hmm. too. But of course, for some of them, if um, they cooperate within the um, confines of community policing, which the former Inspector General of Police uh, took mm -hmm. like uh, as, as his baby, then they will be fine. But we are, as we have seen, Sorry. community policing um, as structured by the media past IG will not really work. People need security outfits like Amotekun that will be provided with all of the tools that they need mm. well funded. that have superior knowledge of the forest mm. and the communities generally. So in terms of intelligence gathering, they will be very, very effective. But by law, Amotekun itself is um, subordinated to the police. They are not permitted to prosecute. Mm. Once they apprehend they a suspect, mm. they are to hand over to the police. I think that Ebubiagu um, can also function in this way. But they know that they have to come up with a kind of legal code for it mm. that will govern its activities, you know, and ensure that it does not run foul of uh, the laws of our country. So at this stage, I can only encourage them that, look, go ahead with this. One day, state police that Nigerians seriously uh, uh, desire would happen because the way things are going, you can, we can all see clearly that a centrally run police cannot solve our security problems, mm. especially at this time. It is the evidence is there for everyone to see. Does it, now it's difficult in the east now. The main attack, the prime attack, the people they attack now are police stations, policemen, and you know checkpoints. So this um, eat and run attack, and it's very very rampant from Anambra down to their main objective. We don't know those people, although there have been a lot of back and forth over this thing, but I think there's an attempt to, <coughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, um, I think the, the focus, really, is to intimidate our security operatives, hmm. to withdraw. But one of the things that um, we don't take into consideration is, Lawlessness of any form cannot resolve the injustice that this set of people or group wants to redress. It can't. Because what is going to happen at the end of the day is, I'm a policeman. To get to my station, I put my uniform in my bag. Hmm. I go there, I finish my job, 8 to 5, I go back home. No form of security again. Then you have opened up the whole of the area mm. to anything, anything goes. 
for me, that's the way I see it. Because if you go to checkpoints and you can't find soldiers there, you can't find policemen, you can't find civil defense, customs, there. there won't mm. be anything. You know, we, we, so we, we don't can go around people. Any hours. time. It, it's in some areas when you are traveling. The mere presence of policemen gives yes. you some sense of mm. assurance. That's Despite the fact that they are there collecting. Mm -hmm. that the are there is somebody that are military just, groups. Mm. They feel you know comfortable that? when they see police. Yes, that there is somebody watching. Mm. Over. But now, everywhere is just porous. You can't, you can't, you are not, because the, even those policemen are not sure of their lives. Mm. Anybody can come, eat them and go. Mm. And what we are going to achieve at the end of the day is we are going to make our country open to attack, hmm. internally and externally. People one are feeling. I, but the one thing I noticed after the NSAS protest mm -hmm. is the seeming demystification of this uh, Nigerian police and some other you, you start seeing video now, somebody will just take bottle, hit it on the policeman's head. You can see what happened with the RRS guy, mm -hmm. somebody just pushing mm -hmm. <laughs> a well-armed person. And we don't want to go into that state today. Yeah, because as you, the, the police are behaving in the right way by not um, um, taking people's lives anyhow, because that was what precipitated the SARS, uh, NSAS protest in the right. first place. You know, the IG even had to come to Lagos when we started having some rampant cases of extrajudicial killing on our streets in Lagos, a situation in which a policeman asks you for 50 naira you cannot yeah, give, and then it takes your life. <laughs> That's not what we want to see in our society. But the restraint that policemen are showing should not then encourage some people mm. to think that, oh, the pol they, that they can treat the policemen shabbily. Mm. Anybody who does that should be made an example of. And that was why we were saying on Sunday that, look, that individual broke the bottle on the policeman mm. said, mm. we want to hear that he's been arrested. Yeah. Sure. We want his face on TV. Yeah. We want an example, an exemplary example made out of that. Uh, the other day, you could see boys in computer They were They were beating up a policeman. That yes, no, that one, they claim that uh, he stole someone's phone. They claim that that one stole someone's phone, you know. So, but that does not give you the license to beat up a police officer with a gun. <laughs> well, anybody who beats up a policeman who has a gun <laughs> must, must imagine that he has 10 lives. <laughs> because <laughs> even those, well, maybe the guy restrained himself because of I what I said. Because mm. let's face it, even you, when you take a life in such circumstances, you also lose your job. Yes. You, are, you, you have families to feed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they too will think about it. So mm -hmm. we want to see policemen demonstrate discipline, yeah. even at give, whatever the level of provocation. Mm -hmm. That's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. We don't want a situation in which people, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, policemen they will just be taking people's lives anyhow. No, mm -hmm. that's not the sort of police that we want. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, whoever uh, misbehaves mm -hmm. to a policeman, or, or a bit of a policeman, that person should rot in jail. It's, it's as simple oh, as that. Also, I would like you, Dr. Oladipo. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you so and much. BKO, thank you for always being there. And that's our package for today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. We're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodou Yuzuba. Bye for now, and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>